Hello, I'm Nina Rhodes, and welcome to Insights. Today we're privileged to have Carol Adrian, co-author of that literary phenomenon, The Cilicine Prophecy, An Experiential Guide. Thank you very much for coming, Carol. I know you have a very busy schedule here in Vancouver, uh, doing lectures and uh, workshops. I'm excited to be here. Oh, we're very, we are thrilled to have you. I think that this book, uh, both The Celestine Prophecy and The Experiential Guide, has brought miracles into a lot of people's lives. And not using the word loosely miracles, right. but truly an inner transformation. I hear that all the time, actually. <laughs> it is. It's like it's changed my life. Mm -hmm. it's, it's really wonderful. And it sounds like a, a platitude, but it isn't. It's actual fact. It did mm -hmm. mine. So what brought you to create this wonderful guide for, for people to further interpret the Celestine prophecy? Well, I think it was my own excitement because um, in 1993, I, two friends had told me that I should read this new book, The Celestine Prophecy, so I ran out and got it like everybody else did. And I got very excited about the sixth insight, which is the part where we look at our parental influences to see what did we have those parents for? What was the positive intention or the lesson that we could have learned from those people? And that made sense to me because I was already working with people. Uh, I'm an intuitive counselor, so I had been working with people around their life purpose for years. And I added this piece. I sort of sat down and made up my own exercise around this. And I found how quickly it worked, and, it, and people got something out of it and could see, oh, I get it. This is why I'm here. This is what I'm doing. So it made me very excited. So it was out of that excitement, enthusiasm, that I was preparing myself, you might say, for the coincidence of having my agent call me and we started chatting and it was not even around business at all but I happened to mention at the end of the conversation about this book and how excited I was and so she decided to follow up by calling Mr. Redfield and it was her idea to come up with the guide and then she called me back and said write a proposal for it so I did and here I am today. Hello and behold <laughs> here we are and we're so mm -hmm. happy that this took place and you mentioned the word coincidence just now and uh, we've learned to use the word coinky dink because there yeah. is no such thing as coincidence uh, and you also deal in intuition the book deals with the intuitive sense mm -hmm. and the the coincidence that isn't really coincidence but to pay attention to what's happening in life watch the signs and interpret them right well the book really is it's getting a message out that I think absolutely resonates with people. Everybody in my classes, when I ask them, did you feel like you already knew this material when you read the book? Yes, their hands all go up. So it's about people recognizing that they do have a guidance within them. They might not have been being so alert to us. A lot of us don't stay alert to it, so we miss it, or we think it's a coincidence or an accident. So we don't really honor that. But the book is, is really telling us that there's a big spiritual transformation going on right now and that we are learning and remembering really that we're a spiritual being. We're not just in a body, that's not the end of it. That we have a lot more he to do here and that we have a purpose in life. And that coincidence is so called is the way the universe speaks to us to open up opportunities so we can do what we need to do. Yeah, it's a manifestation of what you need to do. And a lot of times people will say, intuitively will say, you know, I thought of you today and there you are. I mean, here you are, what a coincidence. Or I could tell it was you by the ring of the phone. Yet we have this tendency to discount mm -hmm. that as, oh, it's just a coincidence, just, you know. But it isn't. It's really, it's interesting. I think people might have a fear of exploring the these um, miracles that we are able to to produce from the mind from opening the mind and ridding ourselves of the fear why do you think we're so fearful of expanding our consciousness and and shying away sometimes from material or workshops or even self-exploration oh I think it's a natural human part of our nature as a human being you know we have a side of ourselves that's conservative that keeps us secure keeps us on track with what we know and the familiar we all do that everybody resists change in the beginning and so we've been programmed for so many years now to rely on our logic and our rational mind and thinking about things and figuring things out that that's the way we feel well if we do it that way then we'll be okay well this is this is the transformation that's happening it's a shift in perspective so we're shifting from realizing yes we do have a rational mind it works very well but we also have the intuitive mind. It's the marriage, really, of the male and female within us. The energies, the power that we have to do things and get things accomplished, and the power to listen 
and find out, well, where is it we need to go? Then we'll do something congruent with that, with the real intelligence. See, there's the heart and the mind, and those are coming together to make it real simple. It's the heart and the mind. It's coming together. We know it, Nina, because look at all the big emphasis right now on mind and body, mm -hmm. the healing power of the mind. And I, I worked uh, with a lot of authors, their books in the guide, to bring that up to show. Here's where we can see the research that backs up these ideas. This novel, The Celestine Prophecy, is simply a, not simply because I'm not putting it down in any way, it's a beautiful rendition of all the wisdom that's coming through right now from many authors. So when people ask me, is this a real story, I say the truth is there. The story is a fable, but the truth of the wisdom is in our hearts. We know it. That's why everybody went out and bought the book and gave it to 30 other people they yeah. knew. Yeah, I went to a birthday party once, and she said, this is my third one today. Yeah. Um, I feel that the uh, Celestine Prophecy and the Guide together allows your mind a safe place to be. Mm -hmm. And the mind is not always a safe place to be for some people. It also creates a wonderful, the questions that we all have simmering inside of us, the right. whys and the wherefore, right. why me. It allows you to experience an inner dialogue, gives you the questions to ask yourself, and then allows you to discover the answers on your own in a wonderful, wonderful, non-threatening way. It gives right. you a very safe space to create that inner dialogue and it, it's absolutely I would say a book that if you've read it to keep it by your bedside and reread mm -hmm. it because a lot of times we go to workshops and we're inundated with information and that's good and then we go home and we're back sometimes into the old mode we've forgotten the path that's true and I think there is a period of integration after like a, a big learning or a workshop, for example. But more and more, I'm getting letters from people who have come to my workshops and telling me that months later down the road, they're still seeing benefits from it, which I think is kind of interesting because they are seeing that it grows over time. So the, the workbook is really, in, and in my workshops, what the main thing I want to do is connect people up with excitement because the most thing, what I found with this um, material is there's a certain sizzle around it. Yes. It's all mystery. And then people want to be an adventure and they want to connect up with the mystery of life. And how do you do that? Well, by being open, by saying, in the morning I'm going to get up and see what life has to offer rather than predetermine it with, oh my gosh, it's cloudy, what a terrible day, I've got so much work to do, I don't have time, I know I'll never get through it all. That kind of mind talk right there will take a lot of the mystery out of your life. So, you know, we work on it in different ways. You know this. I know that you, you and I were talking about this earlier. So it's very exciting work because it brings the excitement back into our lives. And I feel that with people. And it, there, it, I think fear is an issue, but I don't think this, no one is telling you what to do here. This is all self-directed spiritual That's the beautiful development. part. It allows you to explore the most unexplored territory on the planet, which, which is yourself. Which is yourself. <laughs> and it allows you to do it in a non-threatening, very nurturing, explanatory way. And it does continue. I know I picked up the Celestine Prophecy at 11 o'clock at night, put it down at 5 in the morning, picked up a notebook during the, during right. the, uh, the, the um, control dramas mm -hmm. and, and all that, and started to write, becoming the hero. And it was amazing. I started to cry. And, right. And I'm still mind monitoring that when I fall into the old behavior, which we have a tendency to do, uh, that I mind monitor. And then mm -hmm. it does. It lasts forever if you allow it, if you feel right. that you deserve that. The consciousness of deserving well, has I to think, be there. I think one of the big things is that it brings up several points, which is to remember that you have a purpose in life and that why don't you find it? Why don't you feel it? Well, you get into modes like fear or forgetting or being tired, letting your energy drain away. So we talk about bringing up the energy every day, really simple things that people can do to keep on track. It's not that, it's not brain surgery here. It's very simple things. The ideas are deep and profound, but they're simple in execution. By keeping your energy up every day, by looking for coincidences that seem like, well, what is the purpose of that? I've, I could tell you a million stories. We don't have time to go into them, but I have the most, I'm hearing stories from other people's so my own life. This is how I am flowing. This is what Deepak Chopra calls the path of least resistance. Yes. It's the idea of, it isn't that you don't do the work, things don't just fall on you, but opportunities come, and if you follow that, you're going to get 
further ahead faster. It's like being on one of those walkways in the airport where you're walking, but the thing is moving too, and you're part of the flow. You're part of the universal flow. That's what I love. It's so exciting to do this. Well, the other thing that, that in the book that is really revealing to self are the control dramas, which is the aloof, the intimidator, the interrogator, and the poor me, the right. victim. Right. And I found that to be, and then not only do you identify it within yourself, but you begin to identify it in the person you're chatting with so that you don't fall prey to that particular control drama. And the other thing I want to discuss with you is the children. I think what it says about children in the book is phenomenal. The one, if I'm paraphrasing, it's that the children that are born to you or children that aren't that you may just have some guidance with, they're all spiritual beings that have mm -hmm. their own destiny. Mm -hmm. And it's up to us to guide them and nurture them, mm -hmm. but not to say this is what you're going to do and control. And that's right. an issue we really have to concern oh, I, ourselves with. See, this with. is a very big issue for me because as I told you, I wrote my second book uh, on numerology. Mm -hmm. is called Your Child's Destiny. And so... I'm already, I'm already aware of that and working with people to say, well, what is this little soul that you have? What are their particular characteristics? And I'm so glad you mentioned this because uh, two days ago I was uh, interviewing a teacher in my area in California, and she works with 9- and 11-year-olds in her class. And what's so interesting is they are absolutely demanding to talk about spirit. They're asking her. She already has read the Celestine material and the experiential guide and she was telling me she was taking exercises out of that to work with them and their assignment this week Nina was to talk about coincidences and I, I was just talking to her yesterday on the phone and she said oh yes you know she named them off by name this one said this and he noticed that and now they're having a dialogue with their parents about what coincidences are happening in their parents lives but she said these kids absolutely are drawn to books about mystery spirit and of course she tries to talk about in terms of inner development who are you inside who is talking to you on the inside and they absolutely love it and she said these kids are very different than the one she had four years ago this is a different batch of kids coming in this and is exciting they want spiritual knowledge they want to know they want to use their intuition they know this works and they are showing her things in her class she said i couldn't believe this she i could believe it but she was saying they were sitting there, and they said, okay, Ms. Richardson, watch this. And they all got real quiet, closed their eyes, and they, they put their energies together. And she said it was so powerful in that room at that time. And these are kids, and she's not telling them to do this. They're telling her. Well, I think there's a spiritual awakening. It's mm -hmm. time. We are in dire, dire need of it. The, our world has been plunged in so much war, still war, and tragedy, and, and ethnic cleansing, and all things that we put labels on, but what it really is, is we need now that breakthrough. And I know that with children, one of my quests in life has always been to bring new text to the classroom for children to right. understand, and this is the perfect, this experiential guide, right. um, the Celestine Prophecy. And it is so wonderful if we could get this text into to class, because they don't come with manuals. Children, know, their parents don't me. come with manuals. Mm -hmm. And we make mistakes. We're not perfect. And this is the way that they don't take the outside personally. They learn how to understand their little trickster voice, the mm -hmm. negative voice, and mm -hmm. how to be impeccable with what they're thinking about themselves and not take things mm -hmm. personally, but define their own spirit being. You see, all of the th ills that we think we have right now as a society are coming from an old perspective, an old mind, a world view. So if we didn't come from the old world, if we had a new way of being, then we would, things would naturally shift and it, these solutions would occur to us that would be there. They would be creative solutions coming out of a new way of seeing things. Well, we look at our parenting, all of us, in a negative way and in a positive way. And we don't really look at the messages that we got, what, which, the, which this addresses. What messages did we get as children that were letting a life script run us mm -hmm. and how can we redefine that right and then we don't look at our children and say are we doing the same thing are we not respecting them the way they should mm -hmm. we should are we not giving them the freedom to understand that they can be empowered do we have to impose our will all this is in here as well as in ro romance relationships what I'd love for you to address now is the neediness when you need someone and you come from desperation you're going to pick a partner who's also needing and you have codependency mm -hmm. which also is addressed well mm -hmm. so would you define how romance is is looked at in this book well I think what one of the things and this is a very big subject which we you know can hardly get into here but the fact that when you 
meet somebody that you resonate with and you take the time to have a relationship with them around things that are meaningful to both of you and develop that kind of foundation that has a much better chance of being a, something that can grow into a long-term relationship if you want it to instead of just jumping at the energy that clicks the electric energy if you just stop at that level that can be a way of you know getting into the relationship but it's it's only one part of it and if, if only that is seen as yes I must have this person because look at all this energy between us that means we're supposed to be together and I'll get more energy if I'm with that person <laughs> you forget that you can get energy you will get energy from your own source you have to get it from your own source first and then you can share it back and forth but if you think that person has it and I want that energy then you fall into the trap and it will never work because there will always be an imbalance yes and there are so many relationships that uh, are in imbalance because there are what I call energy robbers mm -hmm. people that will will you and you allow it of course there's no that you can't blame we have to stop coming from blame mm -hmm. we are quite responsible for what we do also the book deals with the environment the inner environment you, to make this a safe uh, harmonious environment then we'll be conscious of the outside environment and I would like you to discuss about how the book also addresses the environment in the future how people will be able to respect that well again it's it's comes out of a change of perspective once you become aware of what you're doing for example in the hotel room here upstairs there's a sign that says if you care about the environment don't throw your towel in the bathtub save it for tomorrow and we won't have to wash it over and over again if we don't need to and see that's a change in perspective no one's telling me I have to do anything, but if I care about the environment and I think, oh, here's a way I could make a little difference, I will do that. If I am involved in some economic enterprise and I know that what I'm doing is, is ravaging the environment, if I'm aware and alert to what I'm doing, I probably won't be able to make that choice. So it isn't anything that's imposed upon us. It's like coming out of what is in integrity to myself, what feels like something where I can make a difference, where I feel in harmony with myself then I'll make different choices. So it's a, it's a, the environment is not about environmental controls, it's about I really want to nurture this, this environment I have because it's, it's helpful to me to do that. It means I will be nurturing myself. It's becoming part of the environment and taking responsibility. So it's really, all of this uh, stems from becoming more aware, more alert just to what you're doing, who you are and why you're here and what impact you have on an individual level and that magnifies out. In the book we talk about reaching a critical mass of consciousness. So if we were all thinking like this, or as many people as we can, to reach a critical mass, everything would shift. And, it, and we, would have, we could let go of needing to control each other because we're not in it for that. Well, I think we're so, we have so many toys out there. We have television, we have computers, we have, we're just inundated with this technology and we escape through that uh, this type of what we call entertainment or adult toys mm -hmm. and children's toys too. We, mm -hmm. we have them escaping now. And we don't have time, we don't take the time to smell the roses, that old expression, to go within and to say, my God, there's a vast treasure of knowingness in here mm -hmm. and how free we are to enjoy this planet and ourselves and the people we surround ourselves once we free that mm -hmm. and the truth that expression the truth shall, shall, uh, shall set you free mm -hmm. and Einstein said there's more that of the unseen paraphrasing again than there is of the seen and we don't see it mm -hmm. we don't we don't allow the miracles that were of the mind to expand right well that's what's starting to happen now back in the States two days ago I read in the paper that um, there's an, the natural law party is, is getting onto the ballot as another independent party as an alternative to just Democrats and Republicans. I'm thrilled. <laughs> I'm thrilled because it's, they said it's like a new age party, but all their platform is based on research about following the natural laws of the universe and natural rhythms. If we followed natural rhythms, we'd be a lot more grounded. We wouldn't be so manic and overstressed and tired and, and strung out and make decisions that are not right for us or right for the environment so I think there's very strong signs of change going on right now about this transformation it's not just in a book that talks about it theoretically it's really happening oh it has to happen and I do feel it happening more and more around me the have to have the material people are now saying I want I'd like to go away I want to you know go to a workshop I want to go to a retreat I want to get inside right. of myself and it, it's I people think it want happens meaning. when it's time mm -hmm. to happen that's right People are looking for meaning and they want that connection to something deeper than just the material world.
I hope so. Mm -hmm. I hope so, because that's the future of our lives. That's how we'll all uh, not just survive, but flourish and, right. and be successful in fulfillment. Uh, the other thing that the uh, Celestine Prophecy and the Guide talks about is to look at your life, the patterns, as if or a story. I think that's so important, to look at your life like a story. Mm -hmm. What is my story and what can I learn from it? Right. What is your myth? Because you're really creating your own myth. That happened to me when I wrote the book, when I wrote the proposal for the Celestine uh, Experiential Guide. I looked at all the things that had led me to this point, and I was c completely at the point where I could do this project of all the teaching I had done, the groups I had done, the exercise I, exercise I already developed, and the people I talked to, the books I was reading. It was like, oh, I'm, I'm right at the point of this is the next step for me. So it's important to really acknowledge what you've done up to a certain point and then see what does that tell me? What is the theme here? Do I see a theme? And of course, you know, being a numerologist, I always look at all the complex ways that we move to develop our our, our life purpose and see how, you know, what have I come here to work on? Is it compassion? Is it a vocation of a certain kind? Or is it just learning a certain way to open my heart or be a better listener or be a better parent? You know, what am I really doing in this life of consequence? And, and we talk about purpose, and we were discussing this before. Uh, people think it might just be their vocation, mm -hmm. but it's really being an entrepreneur of your soul and your spirit, of right. expanding so many areas of your life, of going within mm -hmm. and, and understanding. Would you like to discuss that? Oh, I absolutely. I feel very strongly about this, that each of us has been stationed in a specific place. So no matter whether we're being a mechanic today or a doctor or a teacher or, you know, a baker, it doesn't matter where you're stationed, you're going to be talking to people. You're going to be uplifting others. You're going to be a necessary link in communication for somebody else's message. We talk about messages being exchanged between yes. people. And so no matter where you go, you have an opportunity. If you're open and accepting and ready for the encounter, you might have a message for someone tomorrow just in passing at the gas station. Wherever you are, you're, you're carrying this consciousness. And that's what I'm, I want to if anything, to inspire people to remember that they are part of this process of transformation. Each of us who are drawn to this material or other kinds of alternative healing, whatever it is, you, you're getting the word out through your TV shows and so forth. We all have our part to play to love each other. Really, the purpose of our lives is to keep the love flowing between each other. That's so true. Well, when there's love, I, I look at it like at the five fingers you've had. When there's love, there's self-esteem. And that's non-ego based love. It's, it's love of an internal mm -hmm. universal love and then you have self-esteem from self-esteem you have self-respect and self-respect then you have trust because if you don't have any of those you don't trust and when you trust right. then you have fulfillment and if we can look at everyone with these five elements mm -hmm. and then we, we, we release judgment and judgment I think has been practically the ruination judgment mm -hmm. brings fear and right. self-righteousness and and the need to control because that fear is there. Right. Yes, there's, the, there's the, always that question between judgment and discrimination and discrimination in the spiritual sense of what is right for me, what is right for the other person right at this time, and making the choice for the benefit of both rather than a judging, which is a contraction of energy. Yes, judgment is. And the wonderful thing about this book is the judgment is released. You can identify judgment mm -hmm. within yourself mm -hmm. and within the person that you're communicating with and you can let go of it. We talked about the mind monitoring. That's so important to be impeccable mm -hmm. with what you say, not, oh God, I'm so stupid, I've lost the keys or I'm mm -hmm. this or he's this. And the minute we do that, we're really lowering our, our frequency. We are. We're we are. lowering ourselves. We're not coming from a, the higher place that we can. And I think sometimes the word new age seems to get people, it's not new age like woo woo mystic, it's really all the elements that we were given to make life work mm -hmm. for ourselves and others. Mm -hmm. The new age just means hopefully we're entering a new thought pattern, a new way of communicating, right. a new way of accepting that we're all one and that we do make a difference. Mm -hmm. Even when we just smile or thank someone for right. allowing us to cut right. into traffic, right. we're really giving somebody... Because um, we benefit from right. it when we give it away. It's, and I want to talk about you for a moment. Mm -hmm. You've written your Child's Destiny, a, a numerology guide for parents, mm -hmm. which is a wonderful book. Uh, and also another book, uh, which you talk oh, about. Oh, yeah, this is the, Your Child's Destiny. And I don't know if you want to show this, but... Yes, um, please do. This is the book I wrote 
specifically for parents so that they could know what their child is all about because we do have a blueprint that comes in through our name and birthday believe it or not the other my first book on numerology was the numerology kit and um, that is a do-it-yourself very easy book to read uh, and figure out yourself your parents your family your boss if you can get their name and birthday mm -hmm. and we have a blueprint when we come in we, that's shown through that and we do have a purpose and a direction yes we chose our parents we chose our life and if we understand that in life we have ultimate choice the choice right. is ours at any moment we can choose at every breathing second right. to do something for either in a negative or positive way right. it's that choice that yeah, pattern this gives you the general direction of what you wanted to do but you have a million ways of expressing it for more information on Carol Adrian and the, the book, this wonderful uh, Celestine Prophecy and Experiential Guide and the workshop that she's going to do uh, about that, please call 737-7515 and leave your name and your telephone number and um, where can, we can contact you so that we can let you know when she'll be back, which will be a blessing. <laughs> really great. Are there, is there anything you'd like to just wrap up with the, the high points of the book mm -hmm. that you'd like to... Uh... Yeah, well, I think that um, for people who read the book, they'll probably take this away. But the main points of the book, really, that you can use in your life every day are to take time, like you say, to smell the roses, to, t to keep your energy filled. And if, that's, if you get that from nature, going out to nature, going to these beautiful beaches here in Vancouver, uh, really filling yourself with energy and taking the time to do that is probably the best thing you could do. And then to start to listen to your interior signals when you feel like you're getting tired or closed down or your neck is aching, what does that mean? What are, you know, what, take time to, to listen to yourself because it's your best inner guidance is your best guidance. And you're your own best friend. Your own best friend. I want to thank you so much for the time that you've taken and the wonderful insights that you've given us. Uh, I hope we can have you back again. Oh, well, thank you. for. I love being here. Thank you for coming. I'm Nina Rose, and I'd like to thank the Coast Plaza Hotel for providing this wonderful setting for us. And uh, take care of yourself, and remember that you're a special miracle.